Well, we got, you know, updates today. Check that out. It looks so good. All right, so we not only have updates on the engine build, we also have updates on XMC and another series that we're going to start doing on the channel. But let's take a look at the engine build first. Now, as you can see, we have our AFR heads back. And they're sitting on top of this, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty painted block here. That's not the block we're using. This is just, we're using this as mock-up, right? Yeah, that's right. Look at that. But we are mocking up this part right here. The heads mounted, no gaskets on any of this, though. So you got to keep, you know, a grain of salt in mind with that, right? It's not going to be exact as it would be if there were gaskets on it. But mainly, right now, I'm just kind of looking to see, with the heads mounted on the block, how does the intake line up? Is there a gap on the top and nothing on the bottom? Is, you know... Because... When you're dealing with heads that have been milled and, you know, intakes that are old and possibly had work done all this stuff, sometimes this geometry does not line up and it will actually, you know, either want to spread the heads apart as you're bolting it down or it, the angles will be off so it won't seal. So I'm testing it with the tunnel ram right now because I really want to run the tunnel ram. And we have a little gap underneath, which is perfect. That gap will expand as we put gaskets on here. So that's fine. We, we want a gap. We don't want a gap here, though. We want that that looks to be perfectly in line. We don't see any gaps under there. That looks to be perfectly in line. I would say once we put our gaskets on here, this tunnel ramp is actually going to work for this block. From what I can see, the angles are all, you know, pretty good. Let's test that intake out. Oh, but before we do that, check out our port alignment. Now remember, this intake's going to rise up as we put gaskets on it, so that should actually equal out. There is about the same amount of uh, ledge on the bottom of the port facing, you know, down into the intake as there is on the top facing... Uh, uh, into the head. So as this rises up, it's going to equal itself out, and it's pretty much a perfect match, except for the corners there. I don't know if you can see. The corners on the intake are a little more round than the corners on the, or the, the corner, excuse me, the corners on the head are a little more rounded than the corners on the intake are. The intake's more squared off where the, uh, as you'll see in a minute, the head is actually more oval, but that that's easy port alignment there. It, it, they actually line up really well. Okay, let me take these bolts out and swap it around. All right, so now we have the Edelbrock air gap on, and as you can see, there is zero gap on the bottom, and there is actual gap on the side. So, let's see here. Is it looking, at least looks consistent, like that. I mean, that will still probably work. You just got to use maybe some thicker gaskets here, I'm thinking, to actually get this thing raised up enough for there to be silicone sealant under there. I mean, gosh, that, that's kind of a large gap. You might be able to get away with thick, thicker gaskets here. Maybe, yeah, maybe even double up a gasket. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but you, you need some sort of gap down here for the silicone to, you know, bite into. Uh, otherwise, you have it flat like this. The silicone's all going to squish out. Well, I'm thinking... I'd really rather run the tunnel ram anyway, but this might be easier to set things up, just get it running for now. We'll have, we'll have to see, right? But if some of you guys haven't 
even seen because I haven't, you know, we haven't shown these heads in you know, a long time on the channel. Some of you guys might not even know we had these to begin with. I mean, we, we might have came when we were porting the E7s. Uh, these are the preferred heads to use, obviously. Check them out. These are, uh, well, they've had some work done to them, but they are AFR Renegade 165cc heads with some work done to them. Let me, let me show you. Yeah, close up of them here. What are you doing up here, Clifford? I, I don't. Anywho, I thought you were helping me. Well, technically, now I'm abandoning you, and now I'm making my own video. What? You're aspiring against me? Alright, whatever. So, here are the E7s that we ported, and here are the AFRs, just to give you a little comparison of the two. These are the intakes, right? I did not, I mean, really the only thing I did to the intake was I just kind of touched this uh, pushrod bulge. Uh, I didn't even remove the whole thing or anything because I just didn't want to deal with it. So that's kind of that. And as you can see, uh, yeah, way more open, way more line of sight. I mean, you can actually see down into the chamber. For this one, it's just, I mean, you can see a little bit, but not quite as much. So that's the intake side. And here's our combustion chambers. Obviously, these E7s are a lot bigger than these uh, AFRs are. Um, I don't know by how much, actually. I haven't CC'd either of these. This is not standard. It's been milled, right? So I'm not exactly sure the CCs of these. I still have to figure that out. Uh, and this, obviously, we did some chamber work. We came and we relieved the uh, intake valve, kind of softened these edges a bit. We came in here, we laid back this. This used to be a big groove. We laid that back. Uh, well, actually, the whole reason we're not using these is because these still have to go to a machine shop and to get a valve job and stuff. And after getting the bill from having this valve job done, yeah, we're not, uh, the, it's, it's out of our price range here for the moment. But you can see the bowl, right? Did some bowl work, blended that all out, okay? But, you know, it just, it, it, look, look at the, it just, just, just look at it, right? I mean, clearly, you can tell just, just by looking. We got a better product right here, as we, you know, expected. Here's the valves, exhaust, intake, I mean, take a gander. Actually, this exhaust is almost close to that intake. Then these actually have the 202 intake valves. These came stock with 1.9s, I think, but it's gotten a, it's gotten a 202 put in it. So, you know, yeah. Clearly, you know, pretty good stuff over here. All right, now let's check out the exhaust. Now the exhaust is where we spent most of our time with the porting on these heads. We raised the exhaust ports up to match our gasket, uh, and we widened it to match our gasket. This is the original, I mean, that's how much overhang we had up here to begin with too, but we didn't touch the floor at all. Because the exhaust gases, right, you know, get shot up and is trying to come out this way. It doesn't really care about what's on the bottom here as much. This is the direction it's trying to flow out of. So that's really what we spent most of our time doing. As we can see by putting a gasket on here. I'll line you up best I can. Where are you? There you are. Yeah. So you can see that's what we have going on. And you can really see into the chamber pretty decently because of that raised port. Now, as we have over here, we'll flip our gasket around and put you like that. The AFRs are not as raised as our ported E7s. Uh, you know, it, it's, you know, there's still meat up here compared to, <laughs> compared to what we did over there. But it's got a much bigger valve right and it's got more volume uh in the sides as you can see there's a 
there's a significant lip on both sides of this port. So overall, I would be interested to see how these two flow, but clearly this one is a lot more ergonomic and, you know, CNC and whatever else, it's wider. Whereas this one is just kind of, you know, flat like that. But those are the E7s, ported E7s, compared to the AFRs, which have basically stock exhaust and uh, a wider intake, uh, intake valve, and a gasket match. Yeah. As you can see, they're the two differentiating points. Those are our nice heads. That That's the update on them, right? As comparison to what we have been working with. Uh, way lighter, too. I weighed these once upon a time ago. I don't remember. I believe these were like... Gosh, I don't remember how light they, these were. Both heads, you know... Both of these heads versus both of these heads all fully assembled and everything. I don't remember what the weight difference was, but it was like half, half as much. Um, so that's our update with the heads. Uh, XMC, let me show you what we got going on with XMC. Extremely modified carburetor, if you don't know what that is. Uh, she's right there, just awaiting to be worked on some more. Um... Yeah, our boosters, custom boosters. Uh, I have yet to work on that any further because, well, we got uh, we got those heads, so I was tinkering around with that. And the next thing, that's that the, we'll, we'll continue on that in a little bit because in this box is what we're going to be getting started on. Here's a brand new series for you, you guys who like carburetor stuff. Well, we're, we're going to do some carburetor stuff, okay? This carburetor is actually the carburetor that was on the Iron Horse when we first got the car. Uh, this is its original, uh, original to when we got it carburetor, right? It's not the one it was born with or nothing, but it's a 600 Holly uh, vacuum secondary. But the vacuum secondary part's really irrelevant. It's mainly the 600 holly size there and with the base plate. This carburetor is about as bare bones, you know, it's got straight leg boosters. It's a small CFM size. It's got the choke tower on it, right? This carburetor is about as bare bones as you could get for a holly carburetor, right? As low on the totem pole as one could get while still being a four barrel carburetor. Now, here's the thing I want to take this bare bones, you know, basic carburetor and I want to test it. I, I want to, uh, I want to flow test it, right? I want to do all our little tricks to it, you know, thinning down the throttle shafts and butterfly, you know, uh, 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 knife edging the butterflies and working in here, removing the choke horn. I want to do this in stages and I want to record the progress as we go to see how efficient we can make this carburetor be uh, uh, flow wise, right? On a flow bench. And that is possible due to a channel collaboration that I'm doing with uh, here's his channel, right? This guy is, you know, kind enough to work with us, you know, and we're doing a collaboration. He's got a flow bench. I got stuff that I want flowed. We're going to go back and forth. We already established a baseline for it, as you can see in this picture here. Okay, so, you know, make sense of this as you will, right? Because I'm not, I'm not a flow bench guy, so I don't really understand much of what's going on here but this is the baseline the baseline to this carburetor the, the way it sits right now just stock is those numbers we are going to work on this we're going to modify it up we're going to you know mess with the boosters and thinning down in here and 
uh, we'll probably mess with the bores. We might even change out the base plate to a bigger base plate to stick it on this main body like we did with our Holly, we, uh, our uh, 750 to 850 base plate conversion. We might do the same thing here, maybe to a 750 base plate. Let's see what that, you know, how that affects it. Yeah, we might even go to an 850 base plate in the future after that step just to see well, what, what happens, right? You put that giant base plate on it with these small little Venturi's, what exactly does it do? You know, we would be able to find out. So we are going to modify, oh, and uh, you know, this carburetor is going to look completely different after we're said and done. This is another part of the XMC uh, prototype lines. You know, we're working on the booster technology with that one. With this one, we are going to be focusing on uh, uh, cosmetically, how do the cosmetics, you know, affect the flow, like, uh, um, you know. Oh, it, just, you know, it, how do I explain it? Like, I have this stuff in my head, but it's hard to, like, get it out in words exactly what I'm thinking. Like, getting rid of the choke tower, how does that affect the flow? Possibly porting the top, I guess porting could be a word for it, porting the top of this, right? We might add some JB Weld in here and then port it to, you know, match our specification. We might even JB Weld up to here and then port it and make our own velocity stack out of JB Weld attached to this. There's a lot of possibilities with this and I'm pretty excited to see where it goes. So thank you to Noble. He's going to have a couple videos coming out on this. I think he made a short of the baselining. Uh, I think he's waiting until he gets uh, the next stage of this brought to him so he has a before and after to post in a video. So you might not see anything on his channel until uh, uh, we send it back for retesting and then he'll have a before and after uh, on it, which go watch it because all the flow testing and stuff, major like number crunching, is going to happen on his channel. My channel is going to be actually modifying the thing, but if you want to see the results of what happened when we modified it, you got to go to his channel and watch his videos. That's the whole, you know, give and take with collaborations, right? You know, we both got to get something out of it. And I think this is going to be really cool seeing as it is the bare bones. You know, how much performance can we craft out of this bare bones, you know, junk main body carburetor, right? I'm thinking the numbers might surprise you when we're said and done with it. Okay, that's the new series coming out. We're going to be channel col collaborating to work on this carburetor. Okay, so that keep that in mind. Now, all you guys excited to see progress on this engine build? Remember, this is not the block we're using. That's still in the garage, uh, covered in oil, has to go to the machine shop, get cleaned up, and new camber and stuff put in it. That is going to, we're, we're going to steadily try to work on this, but I'm just warning you right now, this is going to, uh, uh, I have something in the works leading up to Christmas. Okay, if you catch my drift, I have something in the works leading up to Christmas that is going to be siphoning funds away from getting the other block to the machine shop. Okay, we have to get the other block to the machine shop before we can start assembling and doing all this and that, right? We need the other block, but that's going to be, you know, to pay the machine shop to do that. First, I have other things that you will, that you will see, right? You will see what I'm doing, but leading up to Christmas, I have another side thing going on that we're bleeding money off of this for that. Okay. So, this will be really hog wild after Christmas. Uh, just keep that in mind. Not, not totally state, it, we're not, not going to do stuff, just, you know. Okay. Any hoozle. Like, we're going to get the specs for those heads uh, coming up soon, so I will run down the whole specs flow, because I had those flowed 
flow tested. We're going to uh, dissect the results of that so we can figure out a camshaft, this and that. So we're going to work on that. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got for this video. This video was really just an update video showing you guys what's going on around here. Uh, just because I haven't thrown anything up in a few days. I got the old kiddo here, which is just dancing in the background, apparently. What are you doing? Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, so, I'm going to spend quality time with her uh, while I got her. Uh, and I will, you know, catch you later. Catch you next time. Thank you.